Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in again. Last week on the channel, I went through all the new Google Home and Google Assistant updates that had come out of Google I.O. 2018. This week I had the time, I went through Google's list of 100 items and I found a number of things that are more smart home or home automation or even personal automation sort of features that Google announced. I'm gonna talk about those this week and I'm also gonna talk about a number of things that were announced in the smart home or home automation space. So let's get going. The first thing I wanna tell you about is called Smart Compose by Gmail. Now, if you have a Gmail account today, you can go ahead and in the settings of that application on just on the web, you can go ahead and enable what's called the new Gmail. Once you do that, you can go into the settings and enable the experimental mode or the experimental features. Once you've done that, Smart Compose will start. And what it will do is it will, over time, learn what you type, learn how you type, learn the phrases you use, and it will continue to develop and develop, especially as Google puts more and more into that feature. But right now, you can go ahead, turn that on. It's not gonna be instantly useful for you, so set your expectations, but it will start to develop over time. I've already seen it a little bit for myself. Something else that Google talked about last week, it's not directly relatable to the Google Home, it's actually relatable to the Google Assistant and Google Maps. So when you're on the road and you have your phone sitting there, you have another device with the Google Assistant on it, you're going to be able to utilize Google Assistant within Google Maps. From there, what you're going to be able to do is send text messages, get the directions through your voice, things like that. So they're making it easier to use Google Assistant within the Google Maps interface as you go ahead and use that while you drive. One other thing that Google says you're going to be able to do is actually request music while you're in that Google Maps application. And of course, that's going to take one of their services that's connected to uh, the Google Assistant at this point. Now what we saw at Google I.O. was that Waymo, their, their newer service where they have some cars out there, they're using the same AI tech that they've deployed all over the place in the Waymo cars and it's giving those cars more capabilities of sensing objects for predicting where objects are moving to and for therefore you know adjusting their speed or adjust or stopping the vehicle completely or speeding up in some cases so they're moving closer and closer with the utilization of ai to having self-driving cars within that waymo service now if you don't know what waymo is it's actually a self-driving car pickup service so they will actually pick you up there's nobody driving and you're able to take that car to your destination so quite a different service than you might have expected but i think it's a great application of the ai technology there were a lot of new features rolled out for Android P. Now that's going to be the next level of operating system for Android. And within that is all kinds of, what I'll say, close to AI upgrades. One of the things that was rolled out is called App Actions. And what they're trying to do with this is predict the action you're going to take as you enter in to an application on Android. So they're not just trying to open the application for you, it's basically once you open an application, they take you right to the action that they think you're about to use. Now I know for myself, when I'm opening up an app, in general, I'm just going to a couple of screens and then I'm exiting. So this would be highly, highly beneficial for me, especially when I'm going through YouTube comments from you guys, you know, I wanna go see Google AdSense or I wanna go see Facebook and I wanna go to my Facebook page. These are going to be very, very useful things for me and I love the predictive nuance to this. Something we're seeing much more from a number of car makers is they're sort of picking a side in terms of either the Amazon Alexa or the Google Assistant. And Volvo has come out and their whole next generation of vehicles, what they're saying, it will have Google Maps, it will have Android Auto, and it will have the Google Assistant on board. 
One of the things that I thought was great in the whole Google I.O. was all of the different new features within Google Photos. I think that's a relatively underused application and when you combine it with things like the Google Cloud services that they have, you know, Google Photos is a relatively powerful application. So what they've gone ahead and they've basically integrated some of their AI capability or what they're calling machine learning and they've gone ahead and created suggested actions. The piece that struck me during their presentation this year was the capability for you to go and as soon as you've taken a picture, it would recognize who you might wanna share that with and then give you that option right up on the screen instantaneously. You weren't having to think, oh, maybe I wanna share this with my friend. It was instantly there for you and it was a one tap share. So stuff like that they also had like bright and rotate if they thought that if the machine learning thought that the picture needed to be rotated those actions would show up instantaneously now moving on to things that weren't necessarily announced at google io there is a second generation of the new chromecast so this would be what i'd call the third generation of the chromecast planned it will have the Bluetooth capability. So this is coming from an FCC filing that Google has made. What they are saying through their filing is that your existing Chromecast is not going to get the update. And there, there's some reasons for that I won't go into, but basically your new Google Chromecast, you're gonna have to go out if you want the Bluetooth capability on that. Some other things announced, Philips Hue has put out a new app and it's supposed to simplify your lighting features. It's supposed to simplify the entire app. And I think if you've been a Philips Hue user for a while, I think you know that the app in general is a little bit clunky. So it's good to see these updates. It's getting good reviews. We don't have it up here in Canada yet, so I can't tell you firsthand how that experience is, but I can tell you that Philips Hue has put out the new application with all the new layout and the new functionality. Something that you're going to see on the channel here really soon is called the WiseCam 2. Now this is a $20 US smart home camera that you can go, you can purchase if you're in the US. I had to import mine here to Canada, but they work great here. The app is available internationally. And so I have that working in my home today. I actually have a couple in my home. Now, one thing about the WiseCam is it didn't have a lot of integration capabilities. So, the good news this week is that WiseCam 2 is now capable of integrating with If This Then That. So that's gonna give us all of the functionality that we've ever wanted. You're going to be able to do all kinds of things within that framework. Something else that's interesting to me is when we get these old smart home or home automation systems like Insteon coming in and getting some more interactivity with our other home automation devices. So Insteon has actually announced through Unomi that they have support through the Unomi app. And now this is giving us capability of connecting more devices to our old Insteon that we might have around the house. I'm someone who has a couple of those devices. So here in the future, I'm going to use that functionality to integrate it with my other systems here. All right, so that's all the new smart home functionality I have. Of course, there's a subscribe button coming at the end of this video. Thanks everyone for watching. We'll see you next time.